Welcome to Main Purpose Ministries audio service. Today we take a look at the hourglass and what it can teach us about living our lives for God, not yesterday, not tomorrow, but now. Turn your Bibles to James. James chapter 4. There we go. James chapter 4. You might can hear me a little better. All right, James chapter 4. I brought my favorite timepiece in my house for a reason. Today, if you don't see one in front of you, for those who listen to my videos, I need you to picture an hourglass. An hourglass ticking down as sand sinks from the top to the bottom as I speak. James chapter 4 reminds me what is so important to everybody today. Maybe you've already guessed it, maybe you've already looked at it, but we've found a way to define it, describe it, and look at it in so many different ways. Time. Time. It's what makes us busy. It makes us late. It makes us early. It even frustrates us on a date. All different kind of things that time can do. We've seen it on clocks, watches, held it in our hands, watched it tick by. It's on our microwave. It was the one on the VCR we never could get right. All right. It's the one that always blinks and flashes when you have an electrical outage. It's time. One thing we wish it would do was truly stand still, as sometimes our clocks do. Sometimes the battery runs dead. I want to tell you that all the clocks can be stopped, but time will keep going. Time doesn't fail. Whether we die today, tomorrow, 20 years from now, time will keep ticking no matter what. Time today has no respect or person. It doesn't favor the young. It doesn't favor the old. I can remember when I was young, I couldn't get time to go fast enough. When can I get out of school? I didn't live from time to time in, in high school and any of those things. I lived from bell to bell. Bell to go to next class, bell to go home, on and on. But it counted up time. And time has come past, time has circumvent, time has come in, time has saved the day, and time has ruined the very best days. All because of time. It's funny because the older I get, the more I want time to slow down. There was one thing my mama told me when I was growing up. She says, time flies. Time passes like this. To a five-year-old, ten-year-old, a, a boy who's 15 waiting on his driver's license, 16, time doesn't fly. 17 waiting on 18 doesn't fly. But you hit about 21 and it just starts going fast. I thought I'd stay 21 for at least four years. I didn't. <laughs> I really did. I looked at it the other day. Do you remember? You're going to remember this. When you were younger, 30 was old. I'm almost 30. It's not old. Whatever they told you, don't believe it. I'm almost there. It's not old at all. It's a, I'm a youngster. I'm a whippersnapper. <laughs> but what I want to ask you is this. Since we can't change time, we can't stop time, we can't speed up time, no matter how much you stare at the clock and it seems like it never goes the normal speed, it truly isn't slowing down, okay? It's just focusing in on something. Since we can't change it, slow it down, speed it up, what can we do? What separates a believer? What separates a church goer? What separates the Word from the world is not... The amount of time they have. But it's what they do with the time that they have. Hopefully all of you can see my, my hourglass. 
Hopefully you can all see it. Hopefully it's not blocked by any of you. I don't want you to stare at it today because you'll realize I'm probably going to preach longer than I should. But what I'm trying to show is an illustration that we'll all get, okay? James chapter 4 points it out best. James chapter 4. Look at verse 14. James 4 verse 14. Whereas ye know not what shall be on the morrow, for what is your life? That's a question. Is it even a vapor that appeareth for a little time and then vanisheth away? For that ye ought to say, if the Lord will, we shall live and do this or that. Yeah, I always, my, my great grandma, which I call grandma because she was granny, that was mama's mama, I would always go to her house, okay, and every time we'd be talking about it, we'd be, we always went to church together and all this other stuff, I'd see her on Saturday, I'd go home, and I'd say, I'll see you tomorrow, she says, yeah, the Lord willing. And I finally understood that when I started coming here, because y'all add if the creek don't rise. Uh, I don't know where y'all live, but I don't know of any creeks that would stop me that way. I guess I'd have to swim across them. But I understand that in this verse because that's what it's saying. For if we know not of tomorrow, for that ye ought to say, if the Lord will. If the Lord be willing, I'll be there tomorrow. If the Lord be willing, I can do that the next day. If the Lord be willing, because I promise you this, if the Lord don't will it, you'll get the flat tires and won't have another vehicle to go in. All right. If the Lord don't will it. But if the Lord wills it, we can look at it in several different ways. We can look at it in terms of creeks, flat tires, problems at home, whatever the case is. But if the Lord will it, there will be a way. So what's time? What do we do with time? Verse 17. Therefore to him that knoweth to do good and doeth it not, to him it is a sin. Real quick, sin is two different ways. Sin is doing things that are bad. Alright? And then secondly, sin is do it, not doing things that are good. Sin is both ways. Well, preacher, I've never murdered. I've never stole. I've never committed adultery. I've never done these little things that the Bible says not to do. Or, but anytime we don't witness, we don't testify, we don't knock on doors, we don't share God's love, we don't be a friend to our enemies. Anytime we don't do the things that we should do, that's just as bad a sin as the others. So what you do with the time that you have is what makes the difference. Let's pray. Lord, we just ask you to open up our mind, open up our word to your word today, whatever we have. Just uh, show Lord God, that it isn't me behind this pulpit, but rather your words being proclaimed. Lord, thank you for this day and this time that you give us. In Jesus' name, amen. Until the sand runs out. In front of me today is an hourglass. As we think about it, as we look at it, as we picture it in our minds, sure, we've all lived longer than an hour. But if we were to put it into the best analogy we could, everybody's life works like an hourglass. And this is why I want to talk about it. It's so important. There's three things that we must do to spend our time wisely. How long we live, I don't know. How long will you live, you don't know. No one knows, but God knows. Okay, I'm just letting you, I'm going to be honest with you, I wouldn't want to know. I don't want to know when I'm going to die, okay? Y'all might want to, but I don't, okay? I just want it to be a surprise, okay? I want it to be a birthday present because I'm going to heaven, okay? But whatever the case is. But what I want you to think about are these three things. What we cannot do, number one, you cannot worry about the sand that's already gone. So what I'm trying to tell you is there's not much right now because we just flipped it over. But what I want to tell you is you can't do nothing with the sand that's already fell through. I want to tell you something. It's fun, it's cool, it's nice to flip over the hourglass. It's fun to flip it over and sometimes I just like to flip it over and watch it. But you don't get to do that to your life. Life on earth gets one shot. 
There is no such thing as reincarnation, rehabilitation, reintegration, any of those things they try to teach in these other religions. We get one time on earth and then the rest of eternity is spent either two places. Heaven, hell. Both two real places determined by what you did with your time that you had on earth. Not your time at the pearly gates, not your time at judgment, not your time on your deathbed, but the time you spent upon this earth. So don't worry about the sand that's already gone. What does that mean? Don't worry about your past. We have a lot of people that cannot get over their past. They can't forgive. They can't forget. They can't let things go. They can't get over a past regret, a past hurt, a misunderstanding, a problem. The problem is this. Today, we give time too much credit. Today you'll hear people say this, time heals all wounds. I'd love to know who came up with that. I'd like to travel back in my time machine and slap them across the face. Because they don't know what they're talking about. Anybody ever had to forgive somebody for something horrible they did to you? Okay, two or three of you nodding your head. Did you ever forget it? Do you know how much better God is than we are? You know, the Bible tells us that He forgives us, but He'll forget our sins as well. He'll put them as far as the east is from the west. How much better is God than us? But anybody who says time heals all wounds hadn't been hurt bad enough. Does it get better? Sure. Does it feel good? Yeah, sure. But guess what? We're still going to miss our parents when they die. It's not going to heal it completely. It's not going to just magically go away. The scar will be there. Siblings, loved ones, problems, time heals all wounds. Don't give time that credit. I believe God can heal wounds. I believe strength through family and encouragement, but I don't think time does anything. Time just keeps ticking. It doesn't like you enough to heal your wounds. So quit giving time the credit. We wish we could go back to that time. Oh, remember the good old days? How many of you would go back to that that time? Outside toilets, no electricity, nothing as a microwave or television or any of those things. I want to go back to that time. Oh, those were the good old days. What kind of time healed that way? What kind of time healed that plate? What I'm trying to tell you is we today give time so much credit. Why? Because we believe if we could get the time back, we could fix the problems. We, if we had one more hour in the day, you ever ask for that? I wish I just had one more hour in the day. Everybody gets the same amount of time we do. 24 hours in a day, 7 days a week, 365 days a year, except leap year and we get one extra day. That's all we get. But we've all asked for that one more time because a little more time could heal. A little more time could we could spend being a little bit busier. Hmm. So many people today are just wrapped up in their past. They're worried about all the time lost. All the time that's ticked by, dropped through. I got a thing for you here. If you worry too much about your past, you eliminate your chance for a future. If you worry so much about the past, the backwards, the behind you, put it this way. This is going to be absolutely perfect. This is just the way it is. When you drove here this morning, did you look through the windshield or the rearview mirror? We look through the windshield. Why? Because when we know when we're trying to go forward, we need to be looking forward. I want to tell you that it's hard to walk straight, drive straight, looking backwards. I'm one of those horrible drivers in that sense. If I look to the left, I'm going to go to the left. If I look to the right, I'm going to go to the right. Y'all nodding because that's y'all too sometimes. (laughs) If I look backwards, there's no hope. There's no hope at all. I don't know where I'm going. But y'all been there, okay? Y'all been there just like it, and y'all just start drifting off. Somebody has to hit you if they're sitting with you. I used to do that all the time when I was riding, when I was driving Mama around. 
She'd always bump me or hit me. Get back on the road. Get back between the lines. But that's the way it is. You know to go forward, you must look forward. Why in the world doesn't it work when we're talking about things spiritually, when we're talking about things lifestyle? We try to live our lives going forward while looking backwards. What we could have done differently. What we should have changed. How we could have done this better. How we could have fixed it. We call it a little word that most people use wrong. We call it experience. What I want you to understand is experience is knowledge gained from either positive or negative. Correct? You've had positive experiences, you've had negative experiences, but they all taught you something. That's the same way we should treat time. You can't go back and trade that experience. You can't go back and get rid of what you learned. But we can't worry about the sand that's already gone. We don't get to go back and fix it. We learn from it and move on. Today, we must do that. Not only from our pulpits and our pews, but in everything we do. What could we do if we quit looking backwards and started looking forwards again? Do what you can today. So many folks just can't let it go. They worry about what they should have done. They forget about what they need to do now. If half of the people, half of the people in the world would try to do what they make excuses for, I believe the world could change. You don't worry about the milk jug, right, that you emptied two weeks ago. How many of you go worry about that one? I worry about the milk that's still in my fridge. And now that I'm on this diet, I've started drinking almond milk. You don't want to drink almond milk. I'm just here to tell you, you don't. But what I'm, what I'm going to share with you is just like you throw out the milk jug when the milk is gone. You don't worry about the date inscribed on it. Best until, because the milk is gone. When the substance is gone, when the time has passed, get rid of it. Put it aside. I don't mean memories. I don't mean forget about things that you loved from your past. I'm not saying that. But we shouldn't dwell on the sand that's already gone. We should take it and move forward. We think about it this way. Your past holds record of worry. It holds record of moments and memories to cherish. But you choose every day which ones you're focusing on. You can't get rid of your past, but focus on the parts that make your future better, that make your now stronger. One of my favorite songs is sung by One Reason. It was a group that used to be together a long time ago. It's not one they made up or created, but it's one I heard them sing, okay? Many other people have sang it, but it's just called Calvary Answers for Me. When I'm called to answer for my history, Calvary is answers for me. Why? Because there will be days you've thought you've got it through. You're done with it. Satan brings it up. Your problems bring it up. Listen, I'm, I promise you this. Death of family members, guess what? There's better days than there are other days. But ever so often it comes back. Ever so often that sadness comes back. It doesn't matter how long it's been. But I want to tell you that each one of those is the same way Satan tries to deal with our sins. He tries to bring it back maybe that one time. I don't know why I did my tiptoes like this. But he tries to bring it back that one time, that one instant, because it just takes one to fall. It just takes one mistake, one problem, one... So when your history lesson needs to be reviewed, go back to Calvary. It's already answered for you. Number two. If we can't worry about the sand that's already fallen through, already gone, then we cannot worry about the amount we have left. Big concern in the world today. When are we going to die? 
A lot of people will think about it. Let me tell you something. Why has it been so popular for the last hundred years? Pastors, preachers, teachers, and everybody that has a, any kind of an ordination, license, or anything has been trying to predict the end of times. Why? So they can be prepared to die. So they can be prepared to meet the judgment that the Bible says is coming. The Bible tells me, don't worry about the morrow. It's what it said in verse 14. Whereas ye know not what shall be on the morrow. What family member one time when I got when I was when I was going to college for a present, they got me a paperweight. Y'all have seen these, they, they just sit on the desk. And the paperweight, it said this: don't worry about tomorrow, for God is already there. We spend a lot of our time worrying. About what's to come. How much do we have left? When will our spouse pass away? When will the problems that we see around the world hit us hard too? Because I've, I've, I've been taught this. I know this. If you're not facing a problem today. You either were yesterday. Or you will be tomorrow. I've heard it put like this. You're either in a storm, just got out of a storm, or heading towards one. That's what life is. It's a whole bunch of storms put together. But there is some sunshine. But there is a ray of light. As Brother Jimmy put it in one of his songs, there is an eye to those storms. But there are the storms. And I want to tell you, for every storm, for every place, for every moment, for every worry in your heart about how much you have left, about what tomorrow can bring, is one less we spend doing it for the King. For salvation. is one less moment we spend doing something productive. Death has our number. We can spend all time, all time, Stressing about it, depressing about it, and recessing about it. Or we can live. I don't know about you, but depressed, stress, and recess doesn't sound good to me. That's why they took recess away from me when I was in high school. It wasn't good for me. They started giving me P.E., but that's what they called it anyway. But none of those things are we can live. Depressed, stressed, recessed, or live. Which one do you want today? We know what depression is doing to our world. We know what the recession is doing. We know what stress can do. So why not just live? What's it going to do? You miss a bill, guess what? That bill collector don't get you in heaven. Just being honest with you. That situation, that anger, that upset time, that mistake or whatever, it's covered by the blood of Jesus and don't get you in heaven. Nothing follows you up there. What I want to tell you is we're missing out on so much because we're forgetting to live. I want to tell you something. The difference between a saved person and a non-saved person is not the breadth. They all breathe. But Christians should live. I know a lot of people breathing today that have no life in them at all. The Bible says to truly have life, you must die to yourself and live as Christ. I've seen people try it the other ways. They look deader than we do. Just telling you. They do. They look so defeated. They look so discouraged. They try to find life in all these things that only give death. What they're seeking is only killing them more. And Jesus said, seek me and I'll give you life. Life. Are we too busy today counting the grains of sand to just enjoy the sand? You ever been to the beach? Maybe you have. I've never been to the beach and counted the grains of sand on the beach. You know what I did? 
I had fun stomping around in it and getting my feet real hot and having to run jump in the tide because my feet got too hot. And jumping back and building these sand castles that wouldn't last nothing. You know what I mean? You just build them all up. You spend all 30 seconds, 30 minutes, 20 minutes, an hour building them all just for water to rush in and destroy it all. But I mean, I don't spend my time Here's a piece of sand. Here's a piece of sand. Here's a piece of sand. Oh, shark. Here's a piece of sand. Here's a piece. Some of y'all got that, didn't you? Here's a piece of sand. I don't do that. But I spend my time enjoying the sand. We have too many people worried about what will happen tomorrow. They forget to live today. I want a person, a place, a time where I can just lay back and enjoy the sand. I don't want my calculator when I go on vacation. I don't need that stuff. I want something that I can do to live. Today, if you're looking at the hourglass in any way, someday you may define your life by the amount of bills you get. Some by the relationships. Some define their life by the materials or possessions they own. And some by the necessities. You ever heard this? I'm living from check to check. Well, my money ran out before my month did. What I want to tell you is, it doesn't matter where your money stopped, time kept going. Time will keep going. And I promise you that most of you here in this place, we've said some of those types of things. We've kept it. We've had it. We've had a little more at times. We've had a little less at times. We understand that. But, but we've all had the same time. Now, don't get me wrong. Some of you are older than others. Some of you are younger than others. But we've all had the same time. That's where we are. Worry to worry. If it's not anything, if it's not this, if it's not... We've all said it. I've known this since I've started preaching. If it's not one problem, it's another problem. If it's not one thing, it's another thing. Worry and stress about tomorrow is a real killer. You know stress physically grays your hair. Stress by itself can gray your hair. Yes, age does too. But stress can physically gray your hair. It mentally drains you faster than any other thing upon the earth. Non-substance abuse. Any other thing you can do to yourself, the worst way to destroy your mind, except by drugs and alcohol, is stress. It alienates you from God and other people. So it destroys you physically, mentally, socially, and spiritually. Worry about what could be. That's scientific proof, but I don't need that because my Bible's told me that all along. It tells me not to worry about tomorrow. It tells me not to be focused on the things to come, but be focused on the day. Choose to live your life, not just deal unto death. Last but not least, and this is it, if we shouldn't worry about the sand that's already gone, and we should not worry about the sand that's left, what is there left? Worry about the sand that's flowing. What I want to point out is if you can see it today and you can see that the sand at the top is dripping or flowing towards the sand at the bottom. As long as the sand is flowing, it's in the now moment. The way a, I want you to get this, the way an hourglass tells time is when all the sand at the top is in the bottom. Does that make sense? Okay, so every moment that it's flowing is a now moment. Every grain is a now time. What do do we do now? 
What should we do today? I believe if you would like to have a better prayer life, there's no better time than now to start. If you would like to study your Bible more, now would be the time to do it. I don't know how long we're going to live. I don't know how much sand you have and how much sand I have. But I know that we now have this moment. But what are we going to do with our now tomorrow? What are we going to do with our now Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday? We're all going to have that now unless God takes us home. That now will come around. It's easy to say, this is what I'll do then. This is what I'll do tomorrow. It's easy to make the plan on paper, but it's hard to turn a now, a now, into that plan. I'm not asking you to give away your memories. I'm not asking you to not plan for a future. But what I am asking you to do is do something now, I don't know how you feel. I don't know where it's going to be. I don't know your thoughts about it, but I know we have a now. And I want to tell you something. That for all the yesterdays that you did nothing was a wasted now at some point. All the days we did nothing. At one point, that was a now. At one point, you lived that moment. But if you focus on that, that's regret. If you focus on that, that's a problem. So move on. Well, preacher, I'm looking forward to the future. I've got all my nows planned out from now on. That's a problem. You can spend too much time planning that you don't do enough doing. And that's where we are today. Don't miss another now. Focused on everything that is not a now. Give it all to Jesus. Because He's the only one who knows how much sand you have left. I want to give Him all the sand I have. And we're through with this. This is where it's at. And I'm going to close up. If we were to take an hourglass and we were able to put in the exact amount of sand that we have left in our lives to the day we die, the problem is we would be so concerned about it, checking it, looking at it, studying it, Check, making sure how many days, how many weeks. Let's say we can calculate it out. Let's say it read out in digital exactly how many years, months, days. Let me tell you something. Every one of us in here would be better believers. Every one of us in here would be better Christians. Every one of us in here would be better church members. Everyone would be better for God if they knew how far heaven was away. Because I want to tell you something. Those that have 20, 30, 40, 50, 60 years, they don't think they need Jesus now. They need Jesus before they die. But they don't need Him now. That's false. That's fake. Everybody needs Jesus now. But if we would study our time, God would see. We would know. We would understand how much better we would need to be if we knew when our time would end. What if we believed that that time could be at any time, anyway? God doesn't want you to have the hourglass because He wants you either way. He doesn't want you when you think you're about to go. He wants you believing that you'll always know that He's always it. The sand tells all where it's been, where it can be, and where we are right now. And I just want to close with this notion that we've gone exactly since I've turned it over 34 minutes, 32 seconds.
What are you doing with your sand today? Because we don't get the privilege of knowing as well as we do today about that one. What about your sand in your life? Is it left? Is it still there? Are you living for now? Let's pray. Thanks for listening. Remember, in this life we live, all we get to do is change the sand that flows. Worry not about the past nor the future. Put it in God's hands. Be a blessing and change someone's life.